The kitchen is where all the action is. Ours and our family's well-being begins in the kitchen, not just in terms of food, but overall well-being of the family and the home. So today I will share a few tips, tricks and hacks that will always come in handy. If you prefer to read and bookmark all the kitchen tips that will be shown in today's video, then don't forget to visit momandme.com.au and read the blog Tips and Tricks to help you with Indian cooking. So let's get started with today's kitchen tips. Winter Essentials When cold days are around the corner, the nasties are around the corner as well. Itchy throats, runny nose, clogged ears and what not. Before rushing to the doctor, why not try these homemade organic toffees and syrups. All you need is 3 tablespoons of ginger juice, 3 tablespoons of lemon juice, half cup jaggery, half cup honey and 2 teaspoons of coconut oil. Mix all the ingredients together and boil it till it comes to toffee-like consistency. To check if the consistency is right, put few drops in water and try and roll it into the ball. If you can form a ball easily, turn off the flame and pour the mixture on a parchment paper and let it cool. Finally, sprinkle some sugar so that toffees does not stick to each other when stored in a jar. Prevent milk sticking to the bottom of the pan. Ever got frustrated with all the white residue on the milk pan as you slow boil milk? You can reduce this by a great deal with just a simple hack. Simply apply a layer of ghee or clarified butter on the bottom and sides of the pan. The pan will come out clean without much milk sticking to it and cleaning will be a breeze too. Reduce kitchen waste. Our kitchens churn out so much waste in forms of peels, tea residue, pulp, etc. Here are few ways in which you can reuse them. Soak banana peels in water for a few days and give the potassium rich water to the plants. The same is true for onion and garlic peels as well. Soak onion and garlic peels in water for up to 48 hours and nutrient rich plant food is ready. Potato peels can be cleaned and made as crunchy potato chips. You can air fry or bake them. Lemon peels and orange peels can be used as scrubs. Or you could soak them in vinegar, let it sit for few days and make an all-purpose cleaner out of them. Leftover tea can be sun-dried and powdered and fed to plants. They replenish the soil with essential nutrients that help plants grow well. This is especially important with plants that are self-contained within a pot, as the soil needs to be constantly topped up with plant food. What's more, the spices infused in our tea have a strong scent that insects don't like, so our tea fertilizer can work as a natural pesticide too. Lime zest can also come in handy to make a refreshing body scrub. All you need is one and a half cup of sugar, half cup coconut oil and a quarter teaspoon of peppermint essential oil and the zest of one lime. Combine it all and use on your body for that refreshing feel. You can also grow new plants from seeds that come out as kitchen waste. I personally have grown avocado and lychee plants with my kids and now these plants are flourishing and are not seedlings anymore. It is a fun way to involve the children in some soil science as well. Almond milk and almond pulp. If you're vegan or you love almond milk, make it right at home. Soak and peel some almonds and blend with a dash of water to extract the milk. Delicious, unadulterated almond milk is yours to enjoy. But what about the pulp? Simply mix it with dough and make the rotis or bake and dry the pulp to make the almond flour, which can be used to make banana muffins or homemade cookies. No waste and all health.
Make your own aloe vera scrub. Aloe vera has several soothing properties, especially freshly cut aloe gel. Combine it with raw sugar and use it as a skin exfoliator. And Radiant Skin is now yours in no time. How sweet is your sweet melon? Ever bought sweet melon home, cut it only to find out that it is unripe and not so sweet? Well, here's a tip to buy ripe ones and enjoy them sweet. Simply look at the stem area. If the stem has begun to crack, then the ripening has begun. If it is firm and the crack around the stem doesn't show at all, it is unripe and will not be as sweet. Starchy pasta water. It was by accident that I discovered that the turmeric stains on my white silicon ladle actually disappeared when I immersed it to stir the pasta boiling. The yellow stains were completely gone. Try it for yourself. As I said, it was an accident that I discovered this. I'm not sure if it works always, but do give it a try. ABC juice. It is a rage now, apple, beetroot and carrot juice. But all three ingredients has a lot of pulp making it difficult to strain and extract the juice. Well, a hack to extract the juice easily from the pulp is to strain it using muslin or cheesecloth or the bag and sip on the goodness. But wait, do not throw the pulp that is rich in fiber. Add it to curries or to the dough and consume them in another innovative way. Use conditioner to reverse the shrunken sweater or blanket. Sometimes disaster strikes, whether it was an accident or someone not knowing that wool and dryers don't mix. Somehow your favorite sweater or blanket got into the hot dryer and has now shrunken. Not to worry, simply mix a solution of cool water and hair conditioner and submerge the shrunken sweater or blanket. Let it soak for at least 30 minutes. The hair conditioner will help relax the wool fibers so you can gently pull the sweater or your blanket back to its original shape. Now this one's my favorite one. How to prevent khamen or dhokla turning red. Has your dhoklas or khamen ever turned red or orange? It happens because turmeric powder reacts with baking soda or eno to give orange or red colored spots or patches and makes your khamen turn orange or red. This can be avoided by adding turmeric powder first and mix the batter well. Now when adding soda, do not mix it but squeeze half lemon directly on top of baking soda. Lemon will make the soda fizz and once the fizzing stops, then you can mix the batter and use it and your dhoklas or varas will never turn red or orange. Why potatoes sprout and should we eat sprouted potatoes? When you see potatoes growing sprouts, what should you do? Firstly, check if they are not stored close to an oven or gas cooktop as excess heat from cooking will make potatoes sprout. If sprouts are small, you can simply peel them off and use the potatoes. But if sprouts are big, it means that potatoes have higher concentrations of toxins. So make sure you cut the sprouts and the eye it emerged from. These toxins which can cause gastric distress, headaches and neurological problems if you ingest too much of them. But only the sprouts and the eye has toxin levels. The rest of the potato is unlikely to be packing excess toxins unless the skin is also turning green. So the question is if you should eat green potatoes. Well, green potatoes means chlorophyll building 
that signals the presence of harmful toxins. So if green is in small area, cut or peel away the green area and eat. But if your potato is starting to look like an emerald, then it's time to toss. So guys, I hope you like today's simple yet powerful kitchen tips. I have few more kitchen tips video on my channel that are packed with kitchen treasure. I have linked few up in the i button and will also provide their link in the description box below. So don't forget to check them out. I will see you next week with another homemaking video and until then, bye bye.